Good morning and welcome to worship here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Cherry Hill. My name is Pastor Josh and we are so excited that you have decided to join us this time for worship. Whether you are joining us on Sunday morning or you are joining us throughout the week, we are so excited you have decided to spend some time with us. We just wanted to take a minute and just kind of walk through what you can expect as you worship with us this morning. Well, as you worship with us, you'll experience some great music from Miriam and from Ellen, and you'll experience some participation as well as we participate in our call to worship and our opening prayer together. We'll also experience some scripture reading, a children's chat from Pastor Cricket, and she does a great job with that. And then we'll hear a message as we'll talk about the cup of choices as we continue on in our series, The Fountain of Grace, as we are in the Lenten season. What Lenten means is it's a time for our heart check. So friends, again, we are so happy you are here with us. We are so excited that you are here. And friends, let us worship together. Please join me now for a call to worship, and I invite you to say with me the words in bold on your screen. God, we choose you. Our hearts are glad. Our whole bodies shout for joy and rest in you. God, we choose you when good things are happening and joy can easily be found. We choose you when our thoughts trouble us and when we can't find sleep. God, you are our cup of blessing and you hold our futures. We bless you because you are our counselor, guide, and the one who secures us. God, we choose you. Our hearts are glad. Our whole bodies shout for joy and rest in you. Please join me now for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise your holy name. You have chosen us as your people, and in return, we love you, and it is our desire to know you more. Give us a thirst for you, and may we choose nothing less than to become just like Jesus. In the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now I invite you to say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord of all hopefulness.
Hi kids, it's Pastor Cricket. Do you have something that helps you sleep at night? Something that maybe helps you find comfort and rest? For Bridie, it's her baby blanket. This is her favorite blanket and she uses it every night to fall asleep. And for Charlie, well, it's an array of stuffed animals. Some that look kind of like this. But we need something, right? We need something that helps us to feel safe, that helps us feel secure. And as kids, maybe you look to a blanket or a stuffed animal, but did you know that if you choose to follow Jesus, Jesus can provide comfort. Jesus can provide rest. All we need to do is love God with our whole hearts and follow Jesus. And he will give us comfort and rest and everything we need. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament, from Psalm 16. This is what our scripture has for us. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. They drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take up their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a good godly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body rests secure, for you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord, for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I need thee every hour.
Choices. Choices are something we can never get away from. From the time that we are children to the time that we are well-aged in life, we have choices. Sometimes we make good ones, sometimes not so much. The story is told of a father that was vacationing with his family who came across the large sign that said, Road closed, do not enter. The man proceeded well, around the sign because he was confident this will save us time. His wife was resistant to this adventure, but there was no turning back. He persisted, and he was a road warrior. After a few miles of successful navigation, he began to boast about how they were saving time and how he had chose the right way. His proud smile, however, was quickly replaced with a humble sweat when the road led to a washed-out bridge. He turned the car around and retraced his tracks back to the main road. When they arrived at the original warning sign, he was greeted by large letters on the back of the sign, Welcome back, you fool. Well, choices are hard, aren't they? Sometimes we think that we know best, much like the dad in this story that I just shared. But sometimes, well, it's better to listen to others, isn't it? We all have a choice in who or what we follow in life. To live a Christian life involves choosing to follow Jesus. For some of us, that choice, well, it is or wasn't easy. For others, well, it is easy. The first time we made that choice may have been long ago or just recently. Or maybe we are considering this choice and wondering what it means, involves, or asks of us. Let's look at our text, Psalm 16. See, some scholars, they believe that Psalm 16 could have been written by a Canaanite, someone who was already living in a land where God led the Israelites and who chose to follow God, the God of Israel, even though doing so would have been a departure from their background and their culture, basically a big no-no. For some people, their upbringing, their culture, and background may make choosing God sort of a default option. Whereas for others, it may, it may mean choosing God may involve, well, a choice for something new, something different. Regardless, we have all had the option to choose gods that we've made. Things like gods of vanity, pride, self-centeredness, consumerism, politics, sports, or we can choose God. God the creator, the redeemer, the sustainer. The psalmist, they speak of choosing God using the image of a cup. In verse 5, by contrast with those who choose another God. In verse 6, this cup here is a way of describing what a person's life is going to be like or their lot in life. In some places, it is involved in punishment or suffering, and in others, a blessing or salvation. When the psalmist says, the Lord is my chosen cup, the psalmist is not claiming the power to control what happens to them. Rather, this psalmist, well, they're choosing to follow God and confessing and trusting that in doing so, God will protect and take care of them in their lives. We can think of this as being positioned to receive God's grace. We do not earn grace, but in turning away from false gods and turning towards God, we are in position and posture to receive what God offers. Even our ability to turn towards God is made possible by grace. 
in our Methodist Wesleyan theology, we call this prevenient grace or this grace that goes before. I often call it John 3.16 grace, that God so loved the world that God gave up everything. God's son, that whoever believes in God, well, there is eternal life. See, choosing God is not a human achievement. It is a response to the gift and promises, the grace that God has already extended. The psalmist describes what being positioned or attuned to God looks like for them. And there's really three ways that this is viewed. First, it's confessing faith and trusting in God. That's in verses 2, 5, verses 10 through 11. The second is looking to God for instruction and help via prayer, scripture, and community. And that's in verses 1, 7, and 11 from the text that I read in Psalm 16. And the last way that the psalmist describes well, being positioned or attuned to what God looks like for them is by praising, rejoicing, and having a heart of gratitude, which is verses 6 through 11 in Psalm 16. Even if you have inherited your faith, how do you choose to follow Jesus? How do you choose this each and every single day? Well, friends, we choose to follow Jesus by what we say and what we do. By reading our Bible, by praying, we choose to follow Jesus by loving others and showing others what the light and love of Christ actually looks like. As I get ready to wrap up, I want to share with you a little bit about my Jack and Raylan. Now, I love my children very, very much, but sometimes, if you believe it or not, they don't always make the right choice. Shocking. I know, pastor's kids, sometimes they don't make the right choice. I myself am a pastor's kid. Do you think I always made the right choice? Absolutely not. But what we always try to tell Jack and Raylan is make good choices. We tell them that over and over and over again because we hope that, well, eventually that will stick, that that will click for them. That when they are getting ready to decide between well, making a wrong decision or a right decision, that if mom and dad have told them enough, that maybe they will choose that right decision. Friends, it's hard. It's hard to make the right choice. As we talked about the first week, whether we are broken or whether we have just been completely healed by the master craftsman, all of us have choices we have to make, don't we? Each and every single day when we wake up, we have to decide will we choose to follow Christ or will we choose to do our own thing? See, whether we're two years old, Raylan's age, or four, almost five, Jack's age, or we've been blessed to live to 74 or older, we are called into relationship. A relationship, this type of relationship that we are called to live into, well, my friends, it requires really two things, to love God and to love others. May we be a people that go this week, that are willing to share Christ's light and Christ's love in a world that so desperately needs it. Amen. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling.
we enter our time of tithes and offerings, may we remember that God is our chosen portion, and our hearts are indeed glad. Choosing God, it leads us to a posture of generosity, sharing our resources with others, that all may know the joy that is found in abundant life. I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for a word of prayer. When we turn our lives to you, God, we find ourselves enrolled in your sacred story, becoming participants in the work of salvation. With open hands, we offer to you now our gifts so that all your children may come to declare the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Amen. Well, friends, we have a couple of announcements this week. And so a number of these announcements deal in the area of uh, family and youth. And so uh, if you have any children or uh, youth, you might want to pay attention very closely. Uh, and this includes if you have any grandkids or anything, because we're going to talk about um, an Easter egg hunt. So that's our first announcement. We will be having an Easter egg hunt here at the church on Saturday April 9th at 11 a.m. And so we'll invite anyone uh, up through uh, grade four to be able to participate in that. And so if you are a family at our church where you have friends, bring them on by. Uh, we invite you uh, for that. We are also looking to collect certain items to make uh, this Easter egg possible. Uh, and so what we're looking for are items like pre-wrapped candy-filled uh, plastic eggs. So if you want to take the time to take the eggs and the candy and put them together, that would be great. We're also looking for the plastic eggs and we're also looking for candy uh, as well. So if you are able to provide any of those, that would be fantastic. You can drop them off uh, in the office and we'll make sure that uh, we get them to Pastor Cricket uh, as we pr start preparing to put all this together. Now, in terms of switching over to the youth, uh, we have a couple of announcements here for the youth. Our youth group will be participating in something that we're uh, calling uh, Sleep Out, which is uh, sleeping to support those who are outcast, underserved teens. Uh, and so we'll be meeting at the church for that. We'll be having a time of dinner together and learning about kind of what takes place for that and then Pastor Cricket will explain a little bit more about what's going to make that evening a little bit different and so that's going to take place on Friday March 25th from 6 to 9 p.m. and so uh, the youth will also be collecting money uh, to, for, to be able to raise awareness for this and to be able to support a ministry in Camden and so uh, be on the lookout the next couple of weeks at church that uh, they will be taking uh, time to be able to uh, take a collection for that. We'll also have youth group uh, tonight, uh, Sunday night, and so we want you to remember that. And our youth group will also be going on an aerial adventure, which is May 7th. So put that on your calendars. Uh, they'll be doing a zip line, but they'll also be doing a missions project that day. And so it'll be a good time of fun, but also a time of serving others. And that's an important part. And in this case, the serving others would be uh, the community and the environment. So our last announcement is our UMW is doing their Easter eggs, their chocolate Easter eggs. So there are three different flavors. There is uh, buttercream, coconut, milk, coconut cream, and peanut butter. And you can have these in either uh, dark chocolate or milk chocolate. And the cost of these half pound eggs are $15. Or if you would like, because you're not a big sweet person, you're told that you're sweet enough already, uh, you can feel free to support our shut-ins. And so for $5, you can donate um, $5 and we'll make sure that we get something to our shut-ins so they aren't forgotten at Easter. Well, friends, those are the announcements we have for you this week. We thank you very, very much for joining us. We hope you have a very good week. Take care.
Well, friends, as we get ready to go this week and we come to our final thoughts, may we be a people, like I tell Jack, make good choices. May we be a people that choose to follow Christ this week, being a people of kindness, of joy, of love, of hope, all things that our world so desperately needs. Friends, we indeed do have a choice, the cup of choosing. May we be a people that choose the right path. Amen. The Old Rugged Cross Thank you.